entering her fifth year as part of the UNM Orlando Women's Coaching Staff, she has also started her own basketball training business called BJ's Elite, which aims to help the young student athletes of New Mexico achieve their goals, improve their confidence, self-esteem, and mental toughness. Ladies and gentlemen, get up for Vera Joe to when I was, I think, in second grade. And, you know, it, at a young age, I knew that I was pretty good at sports. I was athletic. I could beat most of the boys on any given day. Um, so at recess, I would always go out and I would just play basketball or football or soccer or kickball or anything that involved a ball, and I would just be the best, and I was used to that. Well, one day, one of the teachers at the school, she wasn't my teacher, but one of the teachers at that elementary school, um, was watching us play basketball. And I was in the zone, you know, as a little second grader, I only knew nothing but success, nobody had ever told me otherwise, so I'm just kicking all these boys' butts and, and doing my thing, you know? And then after, recess is over, and that teacher approaches me, and I think, oh, she's just gonna tell me how great I am and how awesome I'm doing, right? Well, actually, it was quite the opposite. She told me, Vera Joe, you need to stop acting like a little boy, and you need to stop and go play with the girls. I was in second grade when that happened. So the point that I try to make with this is, you can't follow what society tells you, right? Society is always gonna tell you what they think, and they're always gonna try to squeeze you into their box, and they're always gonna try to stray you away from your dreams. Well, as a second grader, if I didn't have the support system that I did, my dreams could have been crushed as a, what, eight-year-old, right? And, and that happens so much throughout life. And it's not, it's at every stage, society is always going to try to crush you. They're always going to try to push you down. And the point that I make with that is that you cannot listen to society. You can't listen to other people. Whatever you have in your heart, you have to go out and get on your own. But what a lot of people don't know, and I think maybe sometimes when people see the finished product, right, with the highlight video that you all saw and you all heard the accolades and all that kind of stuff, what most people just see is, I call it the iceberg effect. Have any of you guys heard of that, the iceberg effect? Or at the top, you see the top of the iceberg and you just see the success that that person has achieved. But below the water, below the surface, what you don't see is everything that happened to get there. The weaknesses, the vulnerabilities, the times where you have to cry yourself because everything wasn't going your way, you know, the injuries, your disappointments, everything negative that kind of happened to get to that point. And there's positives to it too. But it's not always easy to get to where you want to go. Um, you know, and I went back and I asked him, like, Coach, how come you did that? Why did you do that? And he said, well, Vera, I had to make an example out of you. You were my best player and I had to make sure that you were my hardest worker. And I knew that if you just barely got by, that's not the example I want to make. So that leads me into saying, don't just ever get by, right? So many people in this world just do just enough. I'm gonna do just enough to get this job done. I'm gonna do just enough to get paid, or whatever it is. But if I'm the best person that I can be, and the point that he was trying to make is, if you're the best you, then we become the best we. So pushing me to be the best that I could be as an individual, then allowed us to be one of the best teams in our division. And we ended up going and, and playing in you know, the national tournament two years in a row. And I put some of these highlights in there. Um, you hear team in there a lot. You know, you hear my name, but you hear team in there a lot. Because I couldn't get to where I am today by myself. It takes a team 
to be able to accomplish those things. But that mentality and that belief in yourself is something that you have to have and that confidence in yourself. And to me, I think confidence is two things. It's preparation and attitude. So I have to tell myself, I'm prepared for this. I am as prepared as anybody else here. I put in my time. I was outside. I pushed myself outside of my comfort zone. I was the best basketball player that I could be at the time and still moving forward to be the best that I could be. So my preparation was there. What was missing was my mentality, my attitude about it, right? So that confidence, I didn't have it because I didn't believe in myself. So to be confident, and it was the same thing given last night, getting ready for this speech in front of all of you all. I know that my preparation was there, but my mentality was a little off. So I even have to give myself pep talks even to this day, right? So there's so many instances where you move forward in your life, and there's always going to be times where you have to step outside that comfort zone. And you know you're prepared to do the work. You know you've prepared whatever it is. And for months, weeks, days leading up to it, you've prepared, you put in the work. What's missing most of the time is our mentality. It's that belief in ourselves, right? So I get my bag and I am running through the airport. I, in Phoenix, it's big, right? And I've got my big bulky backpack with me, so I'm just running as fast as I can through that airport. And I get to the plane and, you know, I'm out of breath a little bit. And I said, wait, you know, wait, the team's coming. We're almost here. We're almost here. And they look at their clock and they said, okay, well, they better hurry. So I'm doing my best, you know, to hold that plane, hold that plane. Well, the team finally gets there. Finally. You know, so, whew, I did my job. Well, after on my way, you know, we're on the plane, we make it. I kind of had a little, not a revelation, but, you know, a thought that entered my mind. Where our life is a little bit like running to catch that plane, right? So, you already have the ticket to that plane. It's yours. But are you going to hustle to make that flight? Are you going to run to get there? And most of the time, when you're running through the airport, you get people looking at you like you're crazy, right? You get those looks along the way where they're like, okay. And then you have some people like, you got it, run, Forrest, run! <laughs> run, Forrest, run! You know, some people have humor with it and have fun with it. And some people will cheer you on along the way. But I like to use that a little bit as a metaphor and what, what we're going to in life, right? That plane is yours. You already have the ticket to it. But are you going to hustle? Are you going to sprint to catch that plane? And along the way, are you going to stop if somebody laughs at you? Are you going to stop running? If somebody shakes their head at you because they think, well, I mean, that's not uh, acceptable in society, are you going to stop chasing that dream? There's going to be people who cheer you on and help you to catch that flight. But that, it's yours. You just have to go out and get it, right? And the last thing that I'll leave you with is, again, it takes a team. And we work as a team in all facets of life. Everything that we do, we're, we're in a team, whether it's at home with your family, that's your number one team. <coughs> whether it's at a job, that's a team too. With me, you know, you're a coach. There's so many different elements in life where you're always a part of a team. And the most important thing is the impact that you're going to leave of those around you, the impact that you're going to leave on the others around you. How do you want to be remembered? How do you want to be known? And the most important thing is, what legacy do you want to leave?